Today we're going to make the downtown tote. First we'll start off by making the side end panels. On this block we've actually put a layer of bag stiffener underneath our batting. Then we've trimmed around the edge one to two millimeters from the stitching line then adding on our main fabric. Now we're going to apply our, our pattern, our plaid pattern. Depending on your weave of your fabric will depend on how straight your straight stitches look. If your weave is slightly open, you'll find that it will have a little bit of an irregular look, but that is absolutely fine. The end plaid um, patterns are very simple. Remove from the hoop and trim our outside edges to half an inch. There we go. Now let's start with one of our panels. We're going to do our left panel first. So we have two left panels and two right panels. On this one, we're going to just put a layer of batting down then trim back one to two millimeters away from the edges on the batting and then we're going to stitch down our placement line which is like a map lay our first piece of fabric on and stitch out our sections We've done these in segments and the squares so as you can add a different fabric to every square if you wish, just by stopping your machine. Now remove out and cut away the edges that don't have a complete square because our second layer of fabric is going to go on and replace the fabric we're cutting out with itself. So there we have our checkerboard. We just need to cut out the center of one in the middle. We've cut these out because our next layer is light, but it's not essential to cut them out. Now, possibly I should have put another layer of fabric underneath this um, because we can see through this light fabric very easily, but there is no stitching going to show any of the fabric, so I'm quite happy just to, to leave it as it is. Now we've trimmed those pieces out. And we're going to start doing our plaid design. Just like the side end panels, we're doing our straight line stitching first. Our wide satin stitch. And our narrower window pane satin stitch. The colorways and selection of fabrics and threads is endless. Trim our seam allowances back to half an inch. That's the shape seam along the edge there. Then we just want to mark out with a pen and ruler half an inch from the edge so as we've got a good guide for a seam allowance. So that's our left. That's our right. We want to join these together. So a window pane, or you can just ignore the fabric selection and just do the plain stitching. It's up to you. You can have so much variety with this design. Mark our centers on our side end panels. We want to cut a pair of linings that match the side end panels using the blocks we've already made to as the pattern. Make sure we have our center marks marked. Again, we have a pair of linings as well. These will be the base linings for adding our zip structure at the top eventually. So those sit on like so. Make sure you mark the centers top and bottom. So you can either transfer from the 
block itself or just fold these pieces in half to give us the top and bottom center marks. Very important that we have these balance marks. Let's make up our zip. So our zip extension needs to be as wide as that top line. Um, I think it's three inches down without the seam allowances. So just from seam to seam on our main panel. Then we're going to grab our three inch ends and make some ends for our zips. And then we have our facing, which we've got some interfacing on the back of, which we're going to just shape the ends of. Now this is, both these pieces are three inches wide by the length of what we require on our joint panels. So we're just gonna trim those corners off. So as they are curved. Because the zip is going to be sitting underneath this facing which we're cutting now. So there we have our lining, then we have our facing, then we're going to add an extension onto the zip and that will slip underneath that facing seam at the bottom. It will become clear. So what we have is this sort of an opening. The facing, the zip extension and the lining. That makes the bag totally practical and we have our tab ends on the end of our zip that design we've actually got our our, our um, shoulder strap on the ends which will be on the side panels as opposed to putting them on the front like we're doing now so you can have handbag handles or you can have a shoulder bag you, the choice is yours there's many ways of applying a handle this time we've made some little tabs with some square D rings and we're going to put a, a, a handbag handle onto um, the, the D rings. So they're a two part handle. To make the, the, um, the straps, all we've done is put a layer, or we'll put an inch wide strip of um, bag interfacing, stuck it on with some spray based and then folded our PU over. And then we just put a strip of fabric on top to give us that two-toned effect. So three inches long, fold over one inch, and then thread on our D-ring. Then turn up the other half inch. So from the front, it's an inch and a half. Place it wherever you wish. I'm just come down, down one check and in one check. And we're just gonna stitch around a square to actually stitch that's on through all layers. So down a check, in a check, make sure it's in the center. I'm just putting my, my um, needle case behind there to use it as a humper jumper. This takes the elevation of the back of the foot so it makes us easier for us to stitch without any hesitation. Just makes the playing field all level and so we don't drop any stitches. Bit of a help. There we go. Both in position. Now, right sides together and let's stitch this bottom base seam. First, let's match our seam allowances at the bottom there, and it's seam on seam. Seams are open. It will be crease on crease to match that center point. Put on a, I'm using PU, so I've put on a Teflon glide foot. Sewing just inside the perimeter stitching line. Open it up and make sure that we're happy with all our seams. And then let's stitch over this one more time. Because it is the base seam, it holds everything in your bag. And then 
we're going to trim out our seam allowance bulk just within the seam allowance on the base, do this on both sides. And then we're going to press the seam open. Right, let's apply our lining onto our side panel. If we were going to have a shoulder strap, we would be putting the tab on this seam right this very minute. But we're not. We're going to have handles. So we sew the seam just inside the seam allowance. And then we're going to put all our seams in one direction. So all the seam allowances will face all the seam allowances will face the lining. And we're going to understitch. And that will ensure that our lining isn't seen from the front side when the seam is turned over. Now we just roll that with our fingers and that will sit there quite nicely. And I just want to edge stitch the lining to around the edge of this panel. I just put a little base at the bottom. Because this panel is then finished and when it's attached to the bag, it will be, the lining will be in position. It won't change its position as it is now. And then we'll be sandwiching this panel in between our lining and our bag front and back. Taco style. So it's in the middle there, so at the end. So you can see that the tab would come out from the middle of that panel should you want to make a shoulder strap, okay? And again, just a three inch piece of um, fabric that fits your D ring. Here we have an example. We just stitch the handbag handles directly onto the uh, the bag. I've got some piping around the outside edge of my main bag as well, just as again something different. We've used half inch seam allowances here, which is great. But if you find this is really hard to turn the curve, or if you find curves very very difficult. Smaller seam allowances are easy to apply. Um, so I would be quite comfortable to say a one centimeter or three eight seams on all pieces would be totally acceptable if you want it to be easier to save your curves onto a straight line. So we've clipped, we've anchored the bottom of this side panel to that bottom seam. We've clipped the front panel. Only the front panel, we haven't clipped the side end panel, just the front panel. And we're going to sew for a section. So that top edge is about two, two stitch lines above the satin stitch. It's about an eighth of an inch above the where the satin stitch finishes. We're just going to sew for a section. Sew for about 10, 10 centimeters, four inches. Or, or under until we start going to the curve. Okay, so we're all happy there. Now turn it over so as that the side panel is against your extension table and we're sewing with the fan which has been clipped, the fan of the seam allowance. Um, we're sewing with that up so we can see what we are doing. I'm clipping that I'm using quilt clips for you, but generally I don't do this. I hold it with my fingers and I've got a zip foot on. Make sure those outside edge seam allowances are, are level. I'm using a slide zip foot rather than the traditional ones that come with the machine because I feel they're a little bit more adjustable. So some of them have a screw slide, some of them have a pressure slide. And again, we're going to clip our seam allowances. Let's just turn that over so you can see. Just from above that satin stitch there. Centimeter apart, three-eighths apart. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to actually stitch this straight section into position for three to four inches, so eight to ten centimeters. 
I haven't changed my foot back. I'm using my zip foot, which it's not ideal, but it still works. And we're stitching just inside the stitching line. Now, ideal is not for us to see any perimeter stitching line on the right side of the bag. Okay. So, now let's wrestle this into position. You've got to remember, I'm using PU here, so it doesn't have that sort of dexterity that that other fabrics have. Nevertheless, totally doable. Just be patient and manipulate it into position. I'm trying to make sure that those edge seam allowances are level. I feel like I've got a little pleat there, so I've gone back and come round again. When I sew the seam, I'm quite quite often I will go and sew the seam again and make it look a little bit more straight because sometimes it doesn't look straight. So there we have our seam allowance sewn around that curve. Let's pull this out and show you what that curve looks like. With a bit of heat, it'll look a little bit more molded looking. It looks a little bit raw at the moment, a bit pointy in some places. But once it has a little bit of a press, it will be fine. So truly, the bag is a true taco type, type bag because you've got the, the two longer side and front panels. So sorry, longer front panels than you have side panel. So there we have the second side on. Just make sure that the, those places are all the same one. So it's a second line up from the satin stitch. So that's our outside shell completed. Now let's go and look at our zip. Follow the instructions in the notes about how long to cut your zip. We want to find the midpoint of our zip, so is it, and I'm going to mark it. I'm just, just using a, a chalk pencil. Grab your 3x3. Three and sew a half inch seam down the edge of it. Then press that seam open, then turn it through halfway. Don't turn it through totally. Turn it through halfway. This is where I find the end of a tape measure. Very handy. Because you can slide it between the two layers and manipulate it over the end of that, the hard bit of the type tape measure. Thread our zip on f through the folded edge. And just make sure the back of the zip is turned around so as it's actually in line with the join of that loop. And we're going to sew across the end half an inch seam. There we go, we've sewn across there. Let's trim any hair off. And then just manipulate it down so it creates a square tab. That gives us a nice finish. Okay, I've just top stitched around the edges of those. So a 3x3 three three square gives us uh, an, e an eager um, cover for um, the uh, one inch wide zip. Now, the panel without the fusing on, without the interfacing on, we need to actually fold it in half so as it's right sides together because we're going to sandwich the end of the zip tape in with a quarter inch seam. So I've come back from the iron. So I've turned in my half inch seam at each end and I've folded it in half so as it's the right sides are folded together. Let's just mark our centre. I'll just give it a little crease there to match my centre mark on my zip. Right side up. I'm starting with right side up of my zip. It's just easier. Clip that into position. Make sure it's centralised. And then we're going to sew along that seam just using a zip foot or the edge of your foot. It was just for a quarter of an inch. It could be a little bit more. 
Let's call it, don't go near the zip tape. Don't go near the zip teeth, sorry. Don't go near there. And then we're going to do the other side as well. But we're going to stitch around the edge so as that's all, all nicely finished and not open. See, you can see there I've stitched around the edge very, very briefly. Just edge stitched. That's how that's going to open. Okay, we want to put the other side on, make sure the ends are even. I'm just, I'm just using my normal sewing foot and I'm sewing quarter of an inch in. So those are our two extensions on the edge of our zip tape. And then I'm just going to edge stitch those. Mark our centers, fold and clip. Very important to have our centers all, all um, in place. Again, this is our facing pieces. Let's mark our centers. Center on center. Let's put a clip there or a pin. And we're going to sew a half inch seam. Okay, and the same to the other side. So you have the zip and you've got the, the wings which are facings. Okay, just make sure that we do have those centre marks in. We had them at the bottom, not at the top. And then we want to lay one on top of our first lining. So it's zip facing up with facing facing up with lining facing up. Because we're basically just going to edge stitch and top stitch this onto our lining. Once you've done one of these, it becomes quite clear about the process once you've done one. Once you've done one, actually, you probably won't make a bag without a closure like this. Because they're not hard. We're just stitching within the seam allowance here so as that it is nicely uh, in position for when we do our final seam on bagging out our bag. And then once we get down to here, let's sink a needle, pivot, and edge stitch that seam onto the lining. Okay, so it's edge stitched. That's our purse opening. That sits like that. When you're looking into the purse, let's show you that's what it's doing. That's what we're putting. That's what we're stitching on now. We're stitching that piece of lining with the zip onto um, the inner lining of the bag. So we've got one side attached. Let's put the other piece of lining right side up. Let's attach the other part. So center, curve, clip, clip, clip and stitch well around the perimeter of the seam allowance and down that seam and you will find we have a completed 
zip opening for our lining. That's done. Now let's just sew the bottom seam. Let's put our center on center. We need to leave about a six inch gap. So we're looking at about a 15 centimeter gap. So three and a half inches in from each end. Don't leave the gap too, too wide because you're not going to be able to close it successfully with the machine because the seam allowance of the lining is going to be attached to the curve of the side panel. So we've done that. I've got a hole in the bottom and I've just put some stay stitching on my side seams um, of the lining half an inch in just as a guide for us to clip to. So now we have our bag which we want to turn inside out. What we're going to do is we're going to apply our lining and facing, our zip lining and facing, to the top curved edge. That should sit around about a quarter of an inch down past our panel, that seam there of our lining, or of our, of our facing. We want to sew around the seam. Now, I like to sew for a couple inches below where that panel is. I like sewing a couple inches below that. It just helps with doing the next stage. And stitch just inside the perimeter stitching line. Small stitch. Keep those edges even. Center on center. Just make sure that the seam is not catching, because they ca that it can catch when you turn it through. There we go, look. I had a couple of stitches there, because it was not sitting flat. I should have, I usually sweep my hand underneath the work before I start sewing, but I didn't do that, so half inch. So that's sitting much better, sits so nice and flat. Round the corner. There we go. So that's done. So it's a quarter of an inch past that overlap there between the two greens, the facing and the side panel, quarter of an inch past. So for the second one, I usually just sew that center seam first, just so as it stays in position because. It's not quite so flexible once you've got that zip and you've got the other section already done. The first first side, not quite as flexible. So if you can actually sew that middle section first. So it's just basically you're tacking inside the seam allowance of the center seam and center um, of that lining. Just in that section, then before you start sewing around the edge, it just helps like keeping it flat. So once that seam is sewn, we need to actually then, again, I'll trim out a little bit of that, of that bulk like we did with that base seam. And then, almost out of screenshot, sorry. Um, and we're trimming it back to a bare quarter of an inch, just around the curve and then blending off onto the straight line. Do this on both sides. Clip, clip, clip. I use these little Fisker scissors because they're really, really strong. And I've had them for years and I've never needed sharpening there, but I only use them for stitching and trimming. Right, now you're going to get the gist of what this looks like. So we've done the two top sections of this bag. So we've added the facing lining 
to the two top sections. Let's just turn it through so you can have a look about what we've done. Roll those corners out. Okay, so th that's those two top sections that have been stitched. So when you look at it, you've got a hole at the bottom of that round and you've got a hole at the bottom of the lining. Give that a little press. So it's all sitting nice. You just need to finish those two lower side seams. There's two ways of doing this. Let's turn ourselves inside out again. Turn it all the way out almost. So we want to then, with our lining sandwich, the seam around the bottom curve part of that side panel. I find it easier to sew the straight sections to as far as they will sew comfortably on both sides of the side panel. Just sew those sections until you need to start clipping to go around the curve. So we do it in basically four sections. Still got my zip foot on. I want to try and just over that area, I just want to just attach my center bottom seam to center bottom seam of lining and um, panel clip to our stay stitching line which we put on our lining and we should be able to stitch this all together in one go. If there are some small pleats that's absolutely fine. If you physically can't do this, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with actually pinning it and hand stitching the lining into place. It's fine. You have to control the machine with this technique, not let the machine control you. Zip foot is your friend. And even if you're not sewing right on the seam, we can go back and re-sew that seam again. So center on center, make sure that seam, that center seam of our lining is matched up with the center notch of our side panel. And let's sew that lining. So we're sandwiching our end panel in between the lining and the bag. Seems like a contortionist way of doing it, but it lets the bag sit beautifully with a curved corner once it's complete. So there we have it. Now, as I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sew this seam again to straighten it up. You've got to be careful that you don't get too many pleats on the underside because the lining, you cannot see it. But at least you can straighten that seam up and so closer to the original stitching line. This can be done with a long stitch or a longer stitch than you normally stitch with. You basically just want to hold the lining in place so it's not too baggy. Now when I turn this over, I've actually got a couple of little pleats there, but nothing which is actually holding too much fabric, so I'm not going to undo them. So let's turn that through the right side. Normally I wouldn't do this, I would do the other side. I'd do that, that side around there to my, my two long sections. Oh, we are going to do it. Right, okay. So, again, let's start. Right, so I've turned it through the right side. I've left one side open. I'm going to show you the optional way of finishing this. So what we do is push that seam inside and then turn our lining seam over, find our center notch and our center mark, put a pin in it, A 
and pin around that top head. Well, it's not a head, it's actually the base seam. And you can just hand stitch that onto your lining if you wish. If you can't get in there with the machine, that's the other way of finishing it. Basically, and I've just closed up that bottom seam with the head stitching. So, I've made some straps. I've let the outside that contrast fabric be a little bit longer so it just folds over the edge of the PU, makes it a little bit thinner, you don't, otherwise it's just so thick to stitch. And there is our handles, so I'm just going to stitch across them. Pull it undone. Yes, I do. Some brands of machines come with a humper jumper, um, so, so but I'm just using the packet of needles in this case. Just come across three, four, five times. Just do it slow. Ideally, you are stitching back into the same holes. Trim off all our struggling threads. And there we have it.